good afternoon guys and welcome back to another video i'm so excited for today's video because i want to share with you how i've been able to manage my money living abroad living in bali right now and i wanted to specifically give you guys some budgeting tips that i have been using and i think these are great budgeting tips whether you want to live abroad or even if you're at home right now and you want to know how to manage what you have because i think there's a quote that i heard that says um it's not how much money you make it's how much money you keep so i hope this video is helpful to you guys if you want to see more budgeting videos or also cost of living i'll make sure to leave some list of videos that i've done before and also let me know in the comments so i can make more for you guys all right let's get started it's gonna be catered to my lifestyle which i shared a little bit in a couple of videos i think when i was in vietnam but now it's gonna be a bit different because before when i was i had a consistent income I was able to just do one system so i'm going to show you guys that and show you what i'm doing now maybe the best way i can explain this is you guys to show you a pie chart so i'll see if i can make that and show it to you so you'll have income or money that you're taking in whether it's from your savings or income that you're getting in and that's your gross income and then you'll have 30 percent that goes to tax and then the rest it will be your net income so this is where i'm coming from the net income there so that net income from there, I make sure to live on 50% of that. So 50% of my net income is my necessities, which goes into rent, electricity, water, all of those things that, you know, it's different here. I don't pay for electricity and water. It's all included in my rent, but basically the necessities that I need to live, my, my food, my water, um, my shelter, um, insurance, uh, stuff like that, they all go into the necessities. And then, so after I remove 50% of that for necessities, remember that's from the net. So you guys will see that from the chart. Once I remove that, then I have 10% that I divide into five accounts. The first 10% is going to go to an emergency account. So I save 10% of my income, put it into an emergency account. The next one, 10% that goes into a financial freedom fund. And that is supposed to be to pay off debt like I was doing, or even just uh, saving for your retirement, whatever it is that you want to do that you need to um, improve your life financially. So whether it's a, to pay off your debt, school, student loans, credit cards, or it is for you to invest in crypto or even in the stock market, that's where it's going. And then the next, uh, so that's already 20%. Next 10% is a give account. So this is for charity or if you have anybody that you want to give money to your parents or something like that, it's just a give account right there. And then the next 10% goes into a travel account. So Ralph and I, because of our lifestyle, remember I said that because of our lifestyle, um, the travel account was something that we needed. We needed an account that we can have money to travel from places to places, not only because we're digital nomads, but also because we needed to um, go to another country for certain reasons. So we just had that option there, whether it's for travel, for fun, but it was there as a travel account. And the next one was the fun account. So the fun account was something that we learned from, I don't know exactly where it was. It was something that we learned a long time ago when we got into personal development. And it was something that was very important because they say, what is the point of saving so much money when you're not enjoying it so it was good to have a fun account that we were supposed to spend every week or every month like that money needed to leave so that's great because it gives you an opportunity to go try a new restaurant things are expensive that maybe you don't do on a regular basis well from that fun account you can go do that maybe you wanted to try jet ski for the first time go to catamaran whatever it is that you want to do that's different that's not on a regular necessity basis you will take it from that account and have that experience so that's how we used to manage our money before and now with the recent changes you guys know with teaching English online which been um, completely different with the new regulations in China because of that we had to manage our money differently because we're not making the same income that we used to make back in the day so because of that we've been able to rearrange that system this is a temporary option for us we don't want to do that long term but it's what is working for us so I just want to share that with you just to show you that you can still manage your money even though you have a low income so how we're doing it now so whatever um, the gross income is we still remove 30% for tax so from that net income now, 90% is what we use for necessities and then 10% is what we use for emergency fund. So that's just one thing I wanted to explain to you guys that it is going to change. Like in life, you're not always going to be at a situation where your job is, you know, you're getting more money. Sometimes you're, you know, regressing and then you're also growing because I think it's all a journey. Sometimes, you know, you have a low um, and that's to push you up towards where you want to go in the future. And for us, it's been a great time because we're still learning. We're doing new things. Um, it's been very different but i just wanted
wanted to bring that to your attention. We still have our savings that's there to allow us to work and do what we want to do. So it's where we are currently managing our money and just want to be very transparent with you. You know, a couple of months ago, it was completely different. Now it's a bit of a change, but you can see that it doesn't really change my lifestyle because I'm able to still manage my money well. And I know I can do it less. We did a couple of budgeting videos um, about cost of living here in Bali and we realized how much we had spent and most of it went to food. So when we had to, you know, analyze where our money was going, we're really aware that, okay, we need to be more cautious of that and then we actually drastically reduce our cost of living. So because of that, I know that I don't have to spend 90% into my necessities right now, but I know at this moment, it's what is working for us now. I think it's a great tool if you guys have never heard of it. I'll put the name of where I found it because it's something that I learned a long time ago. Ralph and I have been, we've been aware of it, but we weren't managing it that way yet because in the US, when we were thinking about living on 50% of our income, it was impossible at the time. But uh, once we moved to Vietnam, it was possible. Just to show you that you can still do it if you can't do 50%, live on 90%, not on 100%, then lower it to 80%, then 70%, 80%, like as much as you can, so that you have always an emergency account, you have other accounts that are set up for you, so you're not just using all of your income or all your savings in general. And I think that's very important, especially if you're coming to live abroad in general. One thing I would give you guys an advice on, make sure that you have an emergency account first. Make sure you have at least three to six months of emergency money, like whatever the cost of living is for you in the country when you figure it out by doing your own research when you figure out how much money you need to live in that country per month just make sure you have three to six months of that just in case something was to happen like you guys know with the pandemic things are just crazy and i would actually recommend doing six months now i used to say just three but now i would say definitely have six months because maybe you have to take an emergency flight home and that flight alone can be anywhere from two to five thousand dollars depending on how urgent it is if you don't have access to the flights that you need or something like that so i just want to be very honest like my threshold when it comes to risk is very low ralph knows like i have a very low <laughs> risk tolerance like i need to make sure like I'm covering everything, that's how I am. And that's why Ralph and I work well together because for him, he is very relaxed. Like things will happen, things will get settled. <laughs> He's very relaxed. Like whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. I can't do much about it. I'm just gonna enjoy my life. That's his philosophy. And my philosophy is um, things are gonna happen. I understand that, but I'm gonna do my best to arrange myself in the best possible way. And that's because I have, that's something I'm still working on because I have a bit of control that I always like to have. And it's good to have a certain amount of control, not too much. And that's why we're really well together. We kind of mesh those two parts together. But hopefully that kind of helps you guys understand how to manage your money when you're abroad or even when you're back home because I started that a while ago and it's been very, very helpful for us.